All right, so here is a simulation, a PHET simulation from the University of Colorado. Um, these are great simulations, but this one only has a Java version, and I know not everyone has Java, so I figured I'll just show it to you. So let's take salt, for example, okay? Um, salt is an ionic substance. It's one Na for every Cl. And if I start shaking it into the water, you should see something happening to the light bulb, all right? And you should also look at the concentration graph that tells us how much salt there is in this solution, okay? So what we notice is I've added salt, all right? There's 1.72 moles of salt in every liter of liquid. And we now notice that the light bulb is lighting up. And as we explained before, ionic substances, when you dissolve them in water, they will conduct electricity because we've now separated the ions and the ions or charges have now become mobile. And in order for us to conduct electricity, we need mobile charges. So you can see this is going to go ahead and conduct electricity. So let's take the salt out and let's change it to sugar, all right? So again, we're gonna add in some sugar. So I'm adding sugar, adding sugar, tons of sugar. And what you'll notice again is there's no light up of the light bulb. And again, sugar is held together with covalent bonds, okay? And so sure, the sugar's dissolving into this liquid, but there's no lighting up of the light bulb. We don't have mobile charges because when covalent substances dissolve in water, there's no mobile charges. That's why covalent substances will not conduct electricity. We know that ionic substances will if they are melted or if they are in um, dissolved into solution because in both of those instances, we've broken the lattice apart and allowed for there to be charges um, that are mobile. In this instance with sugar, Sure, we've dissolved it, but we don't have any mobile charges because the molecules are still in their molecule form. They're just not as close together. Let's look at that on a microscopic scale, okay? Let's look at that on a microscopic scale. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. Um, so let's take sodium chloride, again, our ionic substance, and let's go ahead and dump it in there. Notice these are lattice structures. When I dump it in there, what I end up with are separate ions of sodium and chlorine, and again, the fact that the ions are separated once they dissolve in water is why it can conduct electricity because now the um, ions are mobile, okay? And again, mobile charges is what's needed to conduct electricity. If I melted sodium chloride, this would look similar in motion, okay? Except that there would be no water in the background, all right? So let's take that out and let's watch what happens if I put in sucrose, which is the sugar. You'll notice it's carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, okay? And they are actually making up this covalent substance. So if I take and put it in there, like we've got molecules of sugar, okay? I'm gonna dump my molecules of sugar in there. And okay, well, they dissolve, but you should notice that the atoms are not separating from each other like they did in the ionic substance. So in the ionic substance, our ions were able to separate from each other when we dissolve them. When I took my sucrose or my covalent substance and dropped it in there, there's no atoms that are separating. The only thing we've done is taken any intermolecular forces that would be holding each of these molecules together and we're just breaking those intermolecular forces. Again, not a lot of energy is required to make that happen, okay? So that's what it looks like when we take it in there. So this is why there's no conduction of electricity when you take sucrose and put it in water. There's no free charges, there's no free ions because the atoms are still held together in molecules. It's just that the molecules are now separated from other molecules. Whereas before, they might have been closer together to other molecules. So let's take a look at what this looks like um, with the water particles as well. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and show the partial charges of water. So you see the oxygens, which are your red particles or your red atoms, those are gonna be your partially negatives. And the whites are your partially positives and that's your hydrogens, okay? And that's what water molecules look like. I'm gonna go ahead and um, remove that just for the sake of clarity of the drawing. So what you're gonna see here is these water molecules are moving around. This would be water in its liquid form. And there's some attraction between those water molecules in terms of London dispersion forces, dipole, dipole, as well as hydrogen bonding. And that's what's kind of keeping all these water molecules together, okay? And that's what's keeping them from turning into a gas. Um, and that's why they're staying there. They're not turning into a gas because in order to turn them into a gas, we need to break those intermolecular attractions so they can separate from each other. We just haven't done that. We haven't put the energy in to do that. So let's take this salt particle here. And again, this would be a giant particle of salt with a one-to-one -one ratio of Na to Cl. And again, that repeating lattice pattern. And they are being held together with a certain amount of lattice energy. So if I drop them in there, what you start to notice is that the sodiums and chlorines separate from each other. And you should see, like in this water here, this water is going to arrange around the sodiums where 
um, these oxygens are really attracted to the sodium. So all these water particles start to kind of like twist around um, and the oxygen start to be attracted to the sodiums, okay? So if I reset this, I'm gonna go ahead and drop it in again, kind of in the middle. So the oxygens are attracted to the sodiums and the chlorines are attracted to the hydrogens. And so you see again, the separation of the ions of sodium and chlorine. Once we separate the ions, we now have mobile charges, therefore the conduction of electricity. Because water has polar sides, partially positive, partially negative, it's able to attract the positive ions and the negative ions out of the lattice structure, all right? Um, and the same thing would hold true if, if this were not salt, let's say this were another polar substance like an alcohol substance, what would happen is they wouldn't separate into their atoms, but the positives of the um, water molecules would attract to the negatives of the polar molecule itself. And therefore, we would pull the um, polar molecules apart from each other, not the atoms within the molecule, but each molecule would separate. So let's go ahead and reset this. All right, so let's take this in here, all right? So this is our sugar, okay? So if I put that in there, this is exactly what's happening. This is why sugar will die. Um, we see that there was some attraction between these two sugar molecules. Well, now those sugar molecules are separated to each other. That is the dissolving of sugar, all right? Um, and the dissolving of this sugar that we have here is um, caused by a breaking of the intermolecular attraction between the molecules. But notice the sugar itself is still held together. The atoms still are bonded together. The chemical bond within the molecule has not been broken. The only thing that we did is separate the molecules from each other when we dissolved them, all right? And again, this will not conduct electricity. The reason it won't conduct electricity, we have no mobile charges. We just have molecules that are farther apart now than they were before.